Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines, brought to you by Alive. Well, it's been almost three months since the Department of Customs launched its exempt app. And it's been, I think, over 100,000 of you have subscribed, downloaded, and are using the app. Yet there are many who are having issues with the app, uh, just a number of areas that they still need help on and navigating through. And so this evening, we have the department, the IT department of the Department of Customs, who these guys created this app and, and uh, continue to walk us through so that we all understand it better and are able to navigate our way once we get, once we travel, make purchases, and then head back home through the airport. And so they're here again this evening. I'm very happy to welcome them because I tell you, gentlemen, a number of immigration officers and other people have been speaking to me about the app since they've been watching the shows and, and interested in more and hearing of what you have to say. And they say, yes, listen, Shanique, it's good, but a lot of work needs to be done still because a lot more people need to understand it and, and have a better understanding of it. So it's good to welcome you both here. Welcome back, uh, Doyle Burroughs Jr. and Jeremiah Taylor. Gentlemen, good evening once again. Good, good evening, evening, Shanique, and thank you for having us here. Absolutely, my pleasure, my pleasure. Let's, let's provide this wonderful service again for the Bahamian people. And so let's just talk about this app. The app was created, obviously, one, to, to bring about the, the digitalization of the department and to make travel and the traveling experience, especially once returning to the country and, and making declarations, et cetera, and, and getting through customs a lot easier, yes? Yes, correct. The app definitely was created to digitize the department and to assist with um, making the process a bit easier. I know in the learning phases, our lines would have been a little longer, but since then we have made several adjustments to not only the app, but the way that we operate within the department or the customs hall down there at the airport. Mm -hmm. um, so what we wanted to do today, we actually have two videos that we're gonna provide for you. We're gonna show you how to register and how to use this app. But this is important because this again, people wanna know there are many. I know it's good. By the way, over 100,000 have already downloaded and, are you, and have used it or certainly making themselves familiar with the app. Yes. That's good news, isn't it? Yes, it is excellent news. We have over 100,000 persons that have used the app, that have traveled and processed declarations through the app. And surprisingly, we have a large amount of visitors that do their visitors research. Visitors as well? Yes, we have visitors as well. They do their research and they see that we are using the exempt app in the customs area. While it is not mandatory for them to use it, a lot of them come with it already prepared. And when they come down the stairs, they usually ask, what is the entry code? Can we get the entry code? Because they already have the app completed. So even though it's not mandatory, they usually do their research and they but it have it already prepared. Good. So it also makes the travel process, especially getting through the airport, right. even quicker and smoother for them as well. Exactly. Ah, okay. Not okay. only that, we have also um, eliminated the processes of persons who have nothing to declare, making it mandatory that they use the app. They can actually make a verbal declaration now when they come to the airport. So you don't have to down, I mean, you should download the app mm -hmm. because you're gonna be traveling, but if you don't have anything to declare, you can actually make a verbal declaration to the customs officers and they will process you. So you can just come in, make a verbal declaration, they'll do their examination. Now, if you are found with items to declare in their baggage, you're definitely going to have to go back and make an app so we ask you to be as honest as possible. Does this app plug the holes? I know, you know what I mean? When I say plug the holes, <laughs> I mean, you know, there's some of us who would say we spent this or spent nothing, mm -hmm. but you know, we, we spent some stuff. Does this, does this uh, sort of plug those holes? Well, the Shanique, you know, it's impossible to completely plug those holes, but uh, it's been noticed that since we've been using the app, that revenue has been up 90% year over year. Ah. So we were seeing some positive You've seen this in just about feedback. the three month period? Yes, ma'am. Excellent. We're seeing, we're seeing that there's a greater level of compliance, and we're seeing that, like I said, revenue's gone up, and persons are generally being a bit more honest with us. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, listen, uh, you're here to walk us through and to further explain this app to us so that it becomes like, like knowing the back of one's hands. Correct. So the first thing you would have to do to, to get the app to your phone, you would need to go to your Google Play Store or you would go to your Apple App Store. And once you go to those app stores, the first thing you would do is you search exempt and you would download. 
after downloading, the first important thing is signing up. Mm -hmm. So see, to the we bottom see it being right played out on, on the screen. screen mm -hmm. So the bottom right side of the downloaded screen, you will see where it says sign up. Once you click that, you will complete the information on the provided on the screen, which is your basic information, name, email address. You are creating a password because a lot of people get confused. Oh, I don't remember my email password. No, <laughs> you're creating a password for the app. You choose your gender and then the country of residence and country of citizenship, the privacy policy, and um, you accept that and you go ahead and sign up. After signing up, you then have to complete the process by completing your profile. So you would then click the silhouette of the man, again, scroll to the bottom and click update. Once you click update, this uh, how-to video usually appears on the screen. If you need assistance, you can watch the video. It takes you to YouTube and it shows you exactly how to scan your passport. If not, you can click got it and you can go ahead and scan the passport. Mm -hmm. So on the screen now, we're seeing the person is clicking the camera to scan their passport. Okay. And they will include the entire picture page of the passport with the scan. After that is completed, you will complete some additional information, which is your street address, your house number, subdivision, island, a PO box, if you have one. If you don't, it's optional, and a telephone contact. Once you would have done that, you scroll to the bottom of the page and you click save. And that actually completes your signed up process. So Jeremiah, this is relatively easy because eh? I don't want you to sit there. You know, people, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's funny. When, once you guys started appearing on the show, and I know you have more information to get through, but I want you all to take your time and ensure that people are understanding because people, while they think it overall it's excellent, it's wonderful, they have questions. And they've been asking me, I said, listen, hold up, wait. Mm -hmm. The guys are coming back mm -hmm. and they're going to walk us through this. Okay. And so Jeremiah, this is good, what, what he said so far, that, that you, you know, pretend to be a novice, that you see this is good. Well, the process is, once you understand it, the process is fairly simple. I think one of the key things that everybody needs to remember is that everybody has to have their own profile. If you're 13 and older, you have to register for your own profile. 12 and under, you can add them to your profile as a minor. And so when it comes, and this is one of the biggest um, levels of confusion, because when it comes down to making the declaration, let's say me and my, my four brothers travel, we live together in one house. If all of us want to use our exemption, all of us have to be registered for the app. And so all of us have to go ahead and all of us have to create separate profiles. There is a bit of miscommunication with them, meaning that once you create a separate profile, you have to create a separate declaration, but that's not the case. Every, while everybody has to register for their own profile, you're able to put multiple persons on one declaration just by using the add passenger function. And so you'd find that once persons coming through the airport, this is an area that they don't fully understand. And so you'll have to walk them through adding persons to the declaration. And they think that because you have to register for a profile. So if, if a group travels in, uh, on one trip, you're mm -hmm. saying then declare together. Right. That provision right. is there. That's right. what you're saying, basically. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. it's simple, and, simply like the paper form where if we travel together, I can write down the names of all the persons that travel with me. It's the same thing by adding them to the declaration. Another, okay. another um, um, something that I want to address, a lot of persons, they would scan the minors or add the minors under their profile. And when it comes to time to prepare the declaration, they said, oh, I've already scanned. What you would have done is you would have registered that minor under your profile. So that's telling us that that minor is attached to you, that person is underage and they are considered a minor, but they're registered under your profile. So you still would have to scan their passport when you're adding them as a passenger. Not because you scan their passport or registration means that it is automatically taken over to the declaration itself. Because an individual is registered under your profile, doesn't mean that they will travel with you every single time that you make a trip. So that is something that is important to pay attention to. And when we get into the declaration video, we'll pay more attention to that. Okay, let's go there now. Okay. The paper form that you normally fill out for Bahamas Customs. Mm -hmm. And so in order to fill this out, you'll need some information in your receipts, you'll need the flight information, you'll make sure that you have the passport. So again, let people know it's the white paper. <laughs> it's the white paper that we normally would fill out yeah, years ago. Yeah, this is the white ago. paper. Yes, that, mm -hmm. yeah. 
And so when you open the app, you'll see that it says Bahamas Digital Entry Card Form C17, and that's just a digital version of the white paper that we usually fill up. Right. And so you'll make sure that your name is correct, and this, is, this would mean that this is the primary person who is filling out the declaration. You would go down to the bottom of the page, and you will select Add Passenger. And so at this point, you'd be able to scan the passports of additional persons mm -hmm. who are traveling along with you and you may want to use their exemption. But you have to remember that everybody first has to be registered and everybody has to have their own profile. And even if you had scanned the minor using the add minors function, when you are adding them under your profile, you still have to scan them again in order to access their exemption. Mm -hmm. And you'd make sure you scan the picture page of their passport and you'd have to select their relationship to you and whether or not you want to use their exemption. Mm -hmm. So for every person that's traveling with you, you'll have to complete this process. So if you have five persons in addition to yourself, you'll have to complete this process five times. Once that's done, it'll take you to the declaration page. And once you get to the... Keep talking. We and, uh, once you get to the declaration page, it's where you put in the flight information. Now, a lot of persons, <clears throat> the boarding pass that they give you, a lot of this information can be found right there. You'd go ahead, you select the travel date. Always remember that the travel date is the date that you enter the country, not the date that you left the country. You go ahead, select your airline vessel, put in your flight number, select the number of persons in your party. You have to be reminded that if you select four, the app is going to look for you to have scanned four passports, in three passports in addition to yours, in the screen prior to this. So if the number of persons that you add to the declaration does not equal to the number of persons that are traveling with you, you'll get an error prompting you to go back and add them. So as you can see, every part of that immigration form is now online. The custom form. Yes. 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 So the custom, that's yes. the, oh, that's the yes. pardon custom. me, custom. Yes, yes. it's God, online. Just, it's online. Just and real quickly, you all jump in there. And <laughs> aren't y'all sister departments? We are. So, we are. So, um, the, the customs forms, were, uh, pardon me. Um, so of course, you see the flight right. information, all yeah. of that now online to fill out. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. And so once you would have put that information in, you'd go ahead, you would select the add items in order to add the items that you are declaring to Bahamas Customs. It is important to note that even if you are using an exemption, the exemption covers it, you still have to add the items so that the exemption can cover it. Okay. And so you'd go ahead and you, would, you can group your receipts. So let's say I bought clothing from four different stores. I can add up the clothing from the four different stores, uh, Tommy, Guess, Gucci, Michael Kors, where have I got my clothing from? Well, I wonder how much money you get paid. I tell you that. I tell you that. But all these boutique selections high end. But so you don't and you don't have to name those stores. You don't have to no. say Gucci this, Tommy no. that. What happens this. is where it says purchase, mm -hmm. you can just tap right there. You can delete the word purchase or purchase from out of there and it'll allow you to type in the word various, which means that we purchased it from more than one store. Correct. And so at the bottom there, where it's asking you for cost, you put in the total cost from those four stores. And where it's actually for sales tax, you put zero because the sales tax would be included, included in the total. And you just go ahead and you'd save. And so you can continue this process for all of the items that you have. And if you have similar items from similar stores, you can just continue that process. Rather than, as some people think, you have to add every single individual item, which can be tedious if you know how our Bahamian people go. Of course. <laughs> and so when you hit next, you can go ahead and you add the receipts. You can take photographs of them. Um, you can put about two to three receipts in a photograph, just to make sure we can see where the store that is being purchased from and the total at the bottom of the page of all of the receipts, mm -hmm. and you can upload them. At this particular stage, you can add about five photographs. If you want to add more photographs, you get to wait until the end. If you have alcoholic items, then you will go ahead and you will declare those if you have them. If you have tobacco items, you will go ahead and you will follow that process as well. If you don't have anything, you can simply skip those two steps. Correct. At the end of it, after the ask you if you have any tobacco products, the form will ask you if you have to make a currency declaration. That's simply going to ask if you're traveling with $10,000 or more. You can select yes, no, and if you want to use your exemption, you select use my exemption. Now, if you want to use the other persons that are traveling with you, exemption, not yours, at this point, you do not tick the box, use my exemption, because it will add your exemption to the form. Right. And you go ahead and you accept the declaration, and you accept the terms. And down at the bottom, there'll be a button that says, calculate save. If you want to save the declaration and come back to it, you have to get to, this, to the end where it says, calculate save. 
and then you'll be able to access the declaration again. A lot of persons, they stop in the middle and they don't get to the, to the end here. And so they say, well, I entered the information and it all went away. Once you get to this part here, the declaration saves and you can always go back and edit it. Right. Once you calculate save, you click edit form and this will allow you to add additional receipts beyond the first five photos that you have added before. You just select edit form and on the side of invoice, you can press the plus sign and you can continue taking photographs until you've taken all of your photographs. Because a lot of persons, one of their complaints is, well, it told me I can only add five pictures, but mm -hmm. I have about 15 receipts. Mm -hmm. And so this is where you'd come and add the rest of the receipts. Mm -hmm. Additionally, if you were waiting on somebody to register and you wanted to start the declaration, you can now add them. Where it says passenger, you can go ahead and press the plus sign, scan the photo page of their passport, and you'll be able to add them as well. So even if you want to save the form, you save the form, it'll be in edit my forms down at the bottom on the front screen. C-17 accompanied baggage and it'll be right there under uncompleted. And so as you shop, you can continue to add items to your form. You don't have to wait until, okay, well, the night before I'm leaving and I have so much change, so I gotta pass, as, I gotta as per do usual. this, I gotta do right. <laughs> yeah. So as you go along, you continue to add. Yeah. And so you'll find that being able to do this as you go along is a bit more manageable for a lot of persons because it can be a huge task. You know, if I go away for four days, you know, I shop in all every day for four days, for me to then go ahead and try to input all this data the night before I'm set to come back home. And so that's one of the key selling points of the app. Once you have access to the internet, you can do this from anywhere, anytime in the world, as long as you have access to the internet. Well, that sounds pretty good. I mean, it certainly is, a, a, you know, and you guys will come back, but this information is so clear uh, today. Um, what else can you tell us? Because like, again, this evening, the people of people are traveling. We all know that, um, right. whether they be visitors or Bahamians, and so they are very interested in this app because it's mandatory. It's necessary. You can't get around it. Correct. And so this is very, very important to have this information shared. Okay, we want you to know that uh, in order for you to use your exemption, you have to make a declaration. One of the things that we face daily are persons that come to us and they say. We don't have anything to clear we're using your exemption. In order for your exemption to be recognized, a declaration has to be in place. So one thing you need to keep in mind, declaration goes hand in hand with exemptions. We want, we want to encourage you to download the app, register, and if you are confused, you can visit our Facebook page or you can visit our YouTube channels. The videos that we just had on screen and walk you through. They are available on both our Facebook pages and our YouTube pages and Twitter pages. So you can search Bahamas Customs Department or you can search TCED242. Our phone lines are available and we have a live chat on our website which is bahamascustoms.gov.bs. Also within the app there is a help desk feature where you can send a message and once the agent reads the message, they get to the message, they will respond within the app, so you can go in the app and see the response to the questions. We know that we do not have every item listed, and one of the ways that you can find a solution for an item that you cannot find, and you're trying to get it added, is through that live that chat in the app. So you can shoot us a message, we will go ahead, do what's necessary to have that available for you to use. So we are constantly, listening to you we're making changes weekly daily the app that would have been available three months ago is not the app that you will see today as we have certainly made a number of changes to accommodate and try to make it as easy as possible for you to be in public gentlemen i thank you very much this is the department of customs obviously continuing to walk through its exempt app it's 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 mandatory for everybody and so they've been taking the time and will continue to do so to get you to understand it as simply and as best as possible i thank you both for stopping by beyond the headlines and and I certainly of course look forward to seeing you i think it's next week or so we will um, obviously have another another discussion on the exempt